So what, yeah, what is going on with the Green Party of Canada on this meltdown we're seeing? Sincerely, Todd, I have never seen anything like it in my life. They seem to be intent on self-immolation. I do find Elizabeth May's silence almost troubling and, and frankly suspect because you would have thought that she would have come quickly uh, to the aid and to the support uh, of her successor. She has done neither. So I do think that there is trouble brewing. I do think that there is certainly an Elizabeth May faction at work in those instances of the Green Party trying to bring her back. It's a shameful situation. Uh, the, the core of it is asking Annamie Paul to excoriate someone who no longer works there because he took an, a position against some of the members, the, the MPs, who were strongly anti-Israel, and he said that you know he would work against them. He lost his job over that, but that's apparently not enough. Now they want him th to be attacked by Annamie Paul, and if she doesn't do that, uh, they're going to go after her. This this article that just appeared in the Canadian press, uh, not much detail as to the sources, but let's just say that it, it, if it is true, it's even more disturbing because they're threatening to remove the funding that would allow her, of course, Annemi Paul, the current leader, to become a member of parliament. So it's, it's shameful, it's bizarre, and it's unprecedented. Yeah, asking her to denounce a former aide, and, uh, you know, you get a sense uh, uh, that perhaps, you know, they want her head, so to speak, politically. They want her to go. There's no question. There's no, no question, question in, in your mind, mind right? Mind. No question in my mind, Todd, that, that that's the game that's being played here. And it's against the backdrop of an issue that, of course, is important. You know, Israel-Palestine is an important world issue. But the Green Party has an opportunity right now like it's never had before. I mean, the West is burning. People understand the importance of changing our approach to fossil fuels. Mr. Trudeau bought a pipeline. The, you know, the Greens are in a unique position to talk about the importance of all this for future generations. And instead, they're mired in their own internal conflict. I, I think it's a, a real tragedy because these are issues that deserve to have a strong voice. So, of course, their votes are going to be scattered amongst probably uh, well, well, the Liberals and the NDP, maybe in Quebec a bit to the Bloc. But the, the Greens have never done much in Quebec. Anime Paul's fluent French could have even helped them in that regard because Elizabeth May's French, to put it kindly, was... Uh, always a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me ask you, as a former party leader yourself, just the timing of this and how awful it is for the Green Party. Here we are on what many expect is the eve of an election call, and the party uh, has opportunities, as you're outlining, and meantime, they're trying to turf their own leader, some of them anyway. It, it, like you say, some of them, and I, I think I, I'm in a pretty good position to talk about that because I know how tough party <laughs> politics can be and how unforgiving. But despite the fact that what I went through was no fun compared to what Annamie Paul's going through, I mean, you, you can't help but feel a lot of empathy for her. She ran a sparkling campaign. She had the best ideas. She was by far the best candidate. But the person who finished second had these very strident anti-Israel views. That's clearly a faction that would love to take hold within the Green Party. And uh, these anti-Israel views are, are becoming, unfortunately, mainstream. Uh, I see even in the NDP, there's some rather strident comments uh, against Israel by the, on the part of some people who have been there for a long time, not something that Jack Layton or I would have ever accepted in the NDP. So how this even became an issue for the Green Party is a bit bewildering. Uh, Paul Manley, one of the two remaining MPs, of course, the other is uh, Elizabeth May, has very strong, uh, he would say, anti-Zionist views. He's very strongly anti-Israel. He's expressed those views many times. In fact, he tried to run for us, and I denied him the ability to run as a candidate because I think those positions were an anathema uh, to the positions that Jack and I had built and uh, a consensus around within the NDP. So there you have it. And, and a Green Party that had all the opportunities in the world in this election, certainly its best chance to break through and to get a large number of seats. Instead, uh, they're mired in self-imposed conflict and, and conflict controversy and they're immolating on the public square. It's, it's unbelievable. And let me ask you as well about what we saw in Nova Scotia today, what really looked like another campaign stop, albeit virtually, Nova Scotia, the second province, to sign on to a, uh, a deal on childcare funding with Justin Trudeau. Is there any way in any world this is not an unofficial campaign stop? It's a very official campaign stop and everything but legal name because, of course, the campaign not having started, these are all announcements and this is traveling that Melanie Jadi, as we just saw in that picture, and Mr. Trudeau get to do as ministers. So they get to fly around the country. They're not spending their party's money. They're spending, you know, public money because 
officially, theoretically, the campaign hasn't started, but nobody's being fooled by that. I have to say that having spent the 2015 campaign fighting for universal affordable child care in Canada, uh, it's nice to see the Liberals uh, getting on board with that idea. I smiled a little bit when I heard Mr. Trudeau saying, you know, there were some people who didn't agree with it. Uh, that would have included Mr. Trudeau in 2015 because he didn't think our plan was a great idea. I have to say his plan really resembles what we were putting forward. But you know what? It doesn't matter. What's important is a new social program for Canadians. And the good thing about social programs, Todd, is that they're harder to take away than uh, mere election promises. Once these things are set in stone, then they're there for the long term. And I think that's a very good thing for kids and, and for families. Young families simply can't afford the $2,000 plus per month that they have to pay in big cities like Toronto. So it's very nice to see progress with regard to child care. But uh, is this not classic liberal strategy? They take a little bit from the left, they take a little bit from the right, and there you have a uh, liberal yes, platform. There, yes, of course. It is strategy that, that we've seen before with the liberals, and they're great at making these promises. Because again, this goes back to 2015. Climate change is another classic example. Mr. Trudeau really had the world enamored of his, his posturing in 2015. I was in the room with him in Paris at that important conference, and he said, Canada is back. Everybody took that to mean Canada was going to be doing its job. When he back, came back home, he said, I'm going to keep Stephen Harper's plan. Nobody was expecting that. And instead of acting every single year since Mr. Trudeau's been prime minister, greenhouse gases have increased in Canada. And now he says he's got a really good plan that should get everything done by 2050 when he's 79 years old. I think Canadians, going back to the discussion about the Green Party, uh, we're hoping to see some action on these big climate and environmental issues. It's going to be interesting to see if Mr. Trudeau is able to appropriate that. Right now, Jagmeet Singh seems to be really lighting a fire under a lot of young progressive voters. They seem to be inspired by him. The numbers that just came out from Abacus today, Todd, were extraordinary in terms of the leadership appreciation of Jagmeet Singh. So we'll see. I think that Mr. Trudeau still has a pretty strong lock grip on Canada's major cities, and that will help him well in the campaign. But uh, keep an eye on the NDP. They, they seem to be building up some interesting numbers. Always great to see you, Tom.